Hi, this is Yohosam Bhartiya and welcome to another episode of T3M, our topic of this month and topic of this month is data and who better to talk to than Sam Lambert, CEO of Planner Skill. Sam, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for welcoming me on. We have covered Planner Skill uh, so many times, but it's it's a great idea to just remind our viewers what is planet scale and when we do talk about planet scale it does talk about data which is like huge you know quantity the whole history with youtube and all those things so, so planet scale is truly the world's um, most scalable database platform our co- underlying core technology was created at youtube it's called for uh it's a mysql sharding uh, and clustering manager that was built on top of mysql to handle all of youtube's data it was then later adopted by companies like Slack and Square and Roblox and Etsy and GitHub. And GitHub is kind of where I came in touch with the technology. It was fantastically good for scaling MySQL. Uh, then I, you know, it came to Planet Scale. And now we've we've hired a bunch of ex GitHub folks to build what is a completely developer focused DevOps database platform. So not only do we have the most scalable underpinnings for the database. We also have an entire sort of DevOps layer on top, which allows people to automate their database, deploy the schemas of their databases into production, roll back the schema changes without data loss, and essentially just fully automate the database as part of the CI/CD process. How have you seen the evolution of data consumption creation in this whole cloud data, cloud-centric or Kubernetes-centric world? So I think there's just obviously more data than ever. The thing that surprises myself being at at this company is the amount of companies that we see that are very small but have vast amount of data under management. We speak to companies that have a nine-person engineering team and have terabytes and terabytes of data being generated from their application. They might be a mobile game. They might be... um, an AI startup, there's so many different reasons that you might store lots of data. And in this kind of very connected world that we're in, the abundance of data being created is continuous and, and wide. Um, and so it's just, it still amazes me. And, then, and so then it comes to the hard challenges of storing data, retrieving it easily and quickly, and doing it in a resilient way. I mean, we're now seeing huge migrations out of data centers into the cloud. And it involves taking a strategy that's actually native to the cloud. So scooping up data center workloads uh, and just putting them into the cloud usually makes you less reliable, less efficient, makes your application slower. So we help a lot of companies take their data center MySQL deployments, which could be huge, and we migrate them into the cloud. And we don't just migrate them into the cloud in the sense that we just run MySQLs. We run a cloud-native MySQL cluster for you, run on top of Kubernetes, leveraging cloud technologies so that it's appropriately kind of baked into the cloud environment. Um, And it's just ever surprising how much data, the the size of these data sets and how difficult it can be for companies to manage their data. And, 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 you know, databases still remain one of the most significant sources of outages and incidents. And if you don't apply the right practices in the cloud, you could increase your uh, ch- your rate of instance and reduce your reliability coming from the data center. So we spend a lot of time helping these customers kind of think in a more cloud-native, Kubernetes-oriented way. What are some of the big challenges or pain points that you see you did touch upon some of those where you where you see these companies struggle with and that's where of course there are a lot of solutions there are companies which are offering you know similar solutions to a lot of folks but talk a bit about what are the pain point challenges and how Vitesse or panel scale kind of help them accelerate their journey so a lot of the pain points come in and differences from the data center are things like reliability and, and networking and latency so Cloud instances tend to be a lot more ephemeral than data centers and data center servers and disks. You can't like hop on a RAID controller and start trying to resurrect failed disks to retrieve data. You likely have ephemeral pods that no longer will come back and then attached volumes that are persistent, but you need to be able to detach, reattach, migrate, um, scale up and scale down in a, in a cloud world 
and and the cloud definitely has just com- completely different resiliency properties. So for tests being very, very scalable, but also very reliable means that we've done millions and millions of failovers uh, across hundreds of petabytes of data at various different companies uh, at, at huge scale, meaning failure scenarios are very well tested and predictable. Newer solutions that are untested have not gone through so through such rigorous processes of kind of building in a very hostile environment. Vitesse being the way it is and, and even being built on Borg at Google, uh, which was pre-Kubernetes and again, completely ephemeral environment, means that we're used to to keeping high availability in services uh, in a in a kind of a less reliable and predictable environment like the cloud. And so helping people migrate out of data centers where they might know the name of the machine and know where, what rack and what server that machine is. And they definitely kind of treat them a, a lot more as a lot more special. Um, you have, you kind of have to get away from that in the cloud and the is very, very good at doing so. Give us, you know, kind of, you know, an overview of the overall uh, picture of how Panel Scale helps folks with their journey, which doesn't just end with migrating the data. Yeah, so we manage the entire life cycle of the database. Most companies produce a database backend and kind of leave uh, the user up to sort of automating, managing, doing backups, doing schema changes, all of the things that kind of are the daily happenings uh, and, and routine running and maintenance of a database. At Planet Scale, we not only have the world's most scalable backend, we also take full ownership of managing the database. You do not need database expertise to manage your database with plans go. So schema changes are notoriously difficult. They're a locking operation and um, can, can cause downtime if they're done incorrectly. And they're never really handled as a deployment. They're usually like a manual process in the in, as part of the software development lifecycle. Plan scale sort of being natively integrated in the DevOps flow, we actually allow you to fully automate um, doing schema changes and roll them back. Very similar to a GitHub pull request, we, we have a deploy rep- request that allows you to deploy a schema and a change iteratively and safely online. We really spend a lot of time obsessing over how developers daily interact with the database. It's not just about um, kind of that one time you set up and the cluster gets set up easily and, oh, it's like great and works in a demo. We, we really focus on the years and years of building that you do alongside your database. And we try and integrate the process of building into the database workflow. And we have prescribed and kind of very well refined workflows with the database. And that's what makes it very unique. And that's what makes us more of a platform than just a database backend. We talk about how data has evolved. Let's talk about how planet scale has evolved over the year since its you know, inception. There's a two-sided answer to that. There's one, we work very closely with our users, with our community, and we constantly look at how they use the product and how they man- evolve and manage their usage. We listen to them. We see the kind of incidents that they might have related to the database. And we try and provide tooling that would make remediating and solving these things much more simple. We have like our insights product that allows you to really drill into performance problems that you have at the database level and really kind of get in there and and understand and get kind of get feedback from the database. We then, we have the other side of how battle tested for tests is. We try and make it as hard as possible to do the wrong thing and mess up your database. We protect your database. We don't allow you to directly apply schemas or drop data, drop database columns. All those type of operations have to go through a deploy that is like logged, monitored, and it's safe and it's done online and it's rewindable. Um, so we try and bake in a lot of the defaults and, and a lot of that comes from experience. Like everyone at Plan Scale has got a lot of experience running mm-hmm. databases at scale. And that really helps us bake in defaults and have that process layered upon a really solid foundation means that we can overall provide a really solid experience for our users. From technology or innovations point of view, because the, the 
whole market ecosystem is moving at a fast pace. New use cases are emerging. Kubernetes is going, going in production. Uh, so unique challenge are coming up. What kind of innovation, what kind of work is being done either at Vitesse or Planet Scale? We're bringing a lot of innovation in terms of a, a bunch of sort of world first. So one of the products we released uh, late last year was Planet Scale Boost, which is a sort of a real time consistent cache. Query cache. So one thing that is kind of burdensome and, and a lot of kind of legacy databases have to have a lot of sort of tiptoeing around them. It's very, you have to shed load from the database using caching and caching can be a really appropriate way of speeding up your database performance and how you use your database. That said, caching comes with a number of challenges Invalidating the cache when you get updates and, and writes and deletes is is difficult you have to it's a second system you have to store data there you have to migrate oh you have to manage how that data is and the freshness of that data and inconsistent caches can lead to bugs broken applications and just bad kind of user experiences so we've layered on this this query cache that uses the same protocol the same mysql pro protocol the same connection even and you tell us which query you find slow queries in Planet Scale Insights, you tell us uh, that you want this query to be cached. We build the query plan into uh, into the engine. We then stream updates to the cache so that a real time consolidated, sorry, a real time materialized version of that data and that query's results are always in memory. So that means you get thousands of x performance improvement on queries without any worries about invalidation or hosting memcache redis solutions like that perfect thank you i'm also kind of curious of course we all know the history of planet scale so we do know vitess and planet scale but i'm curious you know if you look at today's world since the inception if you can give us once again a glimpse of some of the use cases or users that you feel hey these are the ones who are challenging you know even and that's where we help them yes yeah, so we have some very very large deployments running on our on our cloud uh, single databases with hundreds of terabytes of data doing millions of queries a second. Uh, Fortune 500 public companies where we are their main cloud database. We have a payments platform that does $17 billion of transactions every year running on our platform. Um, we're really starting to see category leaders and very large scale internet companies realize that they want to get out of the business of managing their own databases and that they can kind of buy a platform that is run by folks that they would just work at their, that they would happily hire at their organization, right? Our, our engineering team has scaled the workloads at GitHub, DigitalOcean, GitHub, sorry, Google, Facebook, Twitter. We've like, you know, we've seen it a number of times and we've kind of, we're building that product that we would have bought ourselves while working at any of these companies and other large internet companies are thinking, yeah, that, that's the right way is to outsource to people that we trust to know what they're doing when it comes to running high scale infrastructure on a technology that's trusted globally by very, very large customers. And so that means we've been very fortunate, knock on wood to, to gain the trust and, and take on the workloads of some very, very, very large customers. We obviously work, you know, if you if you go on our website and you we've got a number of case studies of a lot of well-known logos, most people will, 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 during their work day, guaranteed work with, uh, you work with a tool that is hosted upon a plant scale technology. And that's something that we're very fortunate for. And very excited about. When it comes to data, do you see that organizations also need cultural changes internally, where developers, you know, think things are moving uh, left, where uh, it's not once again, it's not data, data is not another silo. It's you know someone else's problem, you know, database and everything else is something totally. Or you're like, hey, culturally, organizations need to start looking at the data just the way we look at security and other aspect of writing an application, deploying an application. Yeah, I think culturally, people need to understand how underserved they are by their current database practices. I think databases have been so difficult for so long that people have almost given up on the idea that they can actually have magical and enriching experiences while using databases. 
like we've made sure our platform speeds up your active development. Whereas you ask anybody else, what's the stance they have with a database? They're not expecting speed ups from the database. They're, they're grateful and happy if the database just doesn't go down while they're trying to make any single changes. And that's where we've trying to, t- trying to push this revolutionary shift and it's cultural. There's a lot of kind of trauma and negativity build up around databases and people not wanting to deploy databases or touch databases or go near databases. We, we've done a lot of re- user research and the word fear comes up all of the time. People fear databases. They fear interacting with the database. That's crazy because what, what are you building of substance if it doesn't require database change, right? Like any features require database changes. And then the thing I would challenge to everyone listening that does DevOps, unless you are deploying your database and can roll back your database as part of a undoing and deploy, are you really fully doing DevOps? If your database doesn't flow around the DevOps flow with you, so we allow you to branch your database at the time you branch your code. So from the very moment you start developing a feature, Plant Scale is there with you. You develop against a development branch. You deploy using a deploy request. You monitor an alert based on insights. If you see issues, you revert and rewind the, the deployment without losing any data. And unless you can do that flow, and I think most people say they're doing DevOps because they're doing it in the stateless world. They're like, yeah, we've got this great continuous, you know, deployment. It rolls out code changes, blue, green. It's amazing. But the database, the DVA still just logs in and kind of manually does that stuff. You're not doing DevOps then. You're ticking a box organizationally. Unless your database fully lives in lockstep with your application lifecycle and gives you feedback and goes back around that loop with you, you have not completed the full DevOps journey. And at date, there's very few solutions that actually allow you and enable you to go and do that. And that is something that's very core to our philosophy. And and we're starting to see a major cultural shift of people realizing the job's not done until every part of your stack operates this way. And the database has been the absolute hardest to bring into this world. But now we're getting there and it, and, and people are starting to understand. As you said, you do help you know, users with the journey, uh, there are a lot of folks who are in uh, very early stages, so they have a lot of room, but there are a lot of folks who are around. If I ask you, you know, I will not ask you a full playbook, but how organizations should approach in respect of VR in their journey when they look at data to build a culture or look at the tools so that they don't hit roadblocks or they're also kind of future proof themselves so that whatever neck innovation is happening or they're moving faster, data does not become a roadblock for them. Yeah, I think it's about building an iterative and incremental process to adding features and modifying and working with your database. You should try and find bottlenecks in your process and, and sources of fear and ways that you, you have to like be too safe, too cautious and try and round those things out with automation and, and stay disciplined. Don't start to tell yourself that because you're at a certain scale, because you're a certain size, because you're of a certain importance, that you're above continual iteration and continued development. People start to say, well, you know, we're big now. Everything needs to be bundled up into these big re- releases. People still excuse themselves by doing maintenance windows. Maintenance windows are unexcusable in 2023. If you're taking a maintenance window to do any operations with your database, you fundamentally are sitting on a bad database technology. And then you need to find an approach to get away from doing that. Because those sorts of practices are not just technically poor. They also set the completely wrong standard within your organization. And it, 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 represents a fundamental lack of imagination. Uh, since we were talking earlier about culture, can you also talk about when we look at, there are some practices that were popularized at Netflix, like chaos engineering is there. Uh, and we talk a lot about other things where organizations are prepared because as I said, applications can go and down, but if the database and something, ah, suddenly you are, you know, uh, nothing is more disastrous than that. So to also talk about some of the modern practices that you're seeing are also helping prepare teams 
to also look at data from a holistic point of view, also prepare them for when something does go wrong? You know, I think I have a better answer for thinking about how things go wrong. I think, I think a lot of organizations fill the gaps with humans. And I think you have to fundamentally understand that if anything, any incidents that go wrong or just a general operation that you should expect. So you think about chaos engineering. Chaos engineering helps you understand the failures you should just expect. Like failures happen. A lot of people operate and their practices are kind of on a hope and a prayer that failures won't happen. Well, they will. They definitely will. Availability zones, it's not, a, it's not an if they go down, it's a when they go down. And so you have to build architecture that recognizes the inevitability of failure. And then you have to understand that if the answer to that failure is human beings getting paged and woken up to respond, you will never hit any respectable SLA or SLO. You have to automate ahead of time what to do when something goes wrong. Now, that's a challenge if you're using a new or untrusted database because the chances they've not seen that scenario many times over. So you're also stuck between a rock and a hard place in the database world. You want innovation, you want speed, you want DevOps, you want all of the things that make modern software development bearable. But at the same time, if the database is less than a decade old, you're likely being dicey with the safety and reliability of your data. So you need both. You need the fundamentals. And you need to be building on a solid foundation, but you need all of the, the, the delight, the forward momentum and the, and the kind of DevOps built in. Sam, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic. And I would love to sit down and chat with you again. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Very excited to have been here and I'm happy to come back. 